Good morning. Welcome to the 8th Anakazi Banking Online Conversations. My name is Muila Pasco Mwenya, Regional Debt Capital Markets at Standard Zambia. Our conversation today settles around capital markets in Zambia, and our distinguished guest is Philip Kechitalu, who is the CEO of the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. Philip, thank you for coming for this, for this conversation. Philip, welcome to Stambik Zambia. Thank you for coming to speak to us. Thank you. Um, I suppose the only place to start is from the capital markets. Can you give us a brief history of the capital markets in Zambia? That way we just demystify the whole conversation for our online viewers. Yeah. Um, I think speaking to capital markets, you one cannot run away from starting with the financial sector. Um, capital markets is um, one of the third, um, um, one of the three segments of the financial sector. So you've got your financial markets, um, uh, money markets controlled by the central bank. You've got your other markets such as the insurance and pension uh, funds that are regulated by um, the pensions and insurance authority. And of course you've got capital markets where the SEC comes in. Now, as the name suggests, uh, capital we are um, a market where businesses can actually uh, raise long-term capital. So in terms of Zambia, the formalization of capital markets um, uh, goes back to 1993 when the first uh, Securities Act was um, uh, passed by Parliament. But I'm glad to say that um, two years ago, I think two, three, four years ago in 2016, a new Securities Act was um, passed by Parliament to make changes to the developments that have happened in the capital markets um, in the last couple of years. I think it's more modern. It speaks to um, um, the things that we are seeing uh, on the market now. For instance, your digital and similar kind of activities that um, happen in the financial sector space. So we um, basically regulate capital markets through the, um, the use of uh, the Securities Act of, 19, of 2016, number 41. So in a nutshell, Without boring anyone, I think um, that's a summary of capital markets. All right. Thank you for that. Um, I mean, I suppose everyone has a bit of an inclination and, and knowledge around the capital markets and what they see in terms of international capital markets, whether it's the JSC, the Dow Jones, and, 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 and so on. But from a local perspective, what is the current state of the capital markets in Zambia? I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'll share mine as well. Oh, sure. Um, for your information, actually, we've been tracking capital markets um, We've got a 10-year index which tracks uh, the performance of uh, capital markets. And by capital markets, we, have, um, um, uh, we use uh, the performance of uh, the Lusaka Securities Exchange. And then we track the performance of um, that market against, for instance, um, somebody investing in dollars. And you know, you can have a, a dollar worth five quarter, maybe five, six, seven years ago, it's worth 18 quarter. So we're really trying to track and see if somebody had invested on the loose versus investing in a dollar or kept dollars in an account, mm -hmm. where would they be? We've also looked at uh, the performance of um, the treasuries, um, your government bonds and um, uh, the treasury bills. Uh, we're also thinking of um, marking that against a property kind of uh, returns. Now for the last 10 years, the performance of um, the capital markets has, has been uh, superior. But we've noticed that in the last um, um, nine months, um, the, the performance of the capital markets um, is, is gone down. And uh, obviously, you, it's um, reflective of um, the activities on the market. Because capital markets don't operate in a vacuum. It does uh, get affected by the macro situation of a particular environment. And this environment I'm talking about, uh, in the case of Zambia, uh, with your inflation going up, uh, investing long term becomes uh, of concern to most of the people because then your you have your capital eroded within a short period of time and then the um, stability of um, the exchange rate is very very key to the performance of capital markets because if I bring one million dollars in the economy how much do I take out in 12 months if the exchange rate has moved against me and if I did not hedge then um, I would have lost um, out. So there are all these other factors that um, get to af uh, affect the performance of capital markets. So we really have to watch our inflation, 
We watch uh, the performance of the money markets in terms of the returns on the bonds. And uh, of course, um, we have to watch um, the exchange rate. It has to be stable to encourage people to invest for the long term. I agree with you there. And, and uh, just to add my view on, 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 on what, you've, what you've mentioned, in my mind, if you have a uh, healthy and functioning capital market, it becomes another indicator, another barometer for the economy, yeah. which can be used to court whether the economy is performing well mm -hmm. or the economy is performing badly. And so it's very, very important that we have a capital market that's robust enough for the index to be used as a barometer for, 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 for the economy. So for instance, in Zambia, I think we've, we've seen the uh, growth of, uh, f uh, let's say, Standbix PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index, mm -hmm. almost as, 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 um, as an economic indicator that stands out there. And then you've got the dollar uh, uh relationship that you mentioned, mm -hmm. which is also seen as part of sort of an economic indicator. But what's missing there is the index, the Lusaka Stock Exchange Index, mm -hmm. which should be, or Lusaka Securities Exchange, as it's called now, which should be there and looked at as a first line indicator of whether the economy is heading this way or that way. And from your perspective, um, obviously you, you're, you're tracking the secondary market activity yes. mm -hmm. and so on. What are your thoughts on the primary aspect, the primary market activity? Are there enough primary market events coming to market? Um, I think in the last couple of um, months, years, um, the, only, the only activity that we've seen, especially in the primary market, and speaking to the securities um, um, uh, issuance, we've only had one IPO, which was um, done in December and uh, listed in January. This is Zafico, which is um, the country's um, forestry company, if you like. Um, it did perform um, above expectations in the sense that um, it was issued in a very, very depressed market. But I'm glad to say that um, the subscription was above 96%, if I'm not uh, mistaken, which is a very, very good indicator of the appetite of good assets being brought onto the market. But when you're talking about capital markets, if we may just backtrack a bit, we shouldn't just restrict ourselves to shares mm -hmm. because in the capital markets, debt instruments should and can be issued as well. We have had a few debt instrument issuances in the last couple of years, but um, this has been affected by the performance of um, um, the government bond and uh, treasury bills because if the rate is good there, then you're really competing with uh, government in terms of uh, raising uh, finances. With the yields um, um, above 25%, then that means the private sector person trying to raise money has to beat government, mm -hmm. has to offer more than um, that rate. And the market has a this tendency of um, pegging um, uh, issuances to the treasury bill rate, which is a very, very short-term view of capital markets. Capital markets should be for the long term, and pegging it um, uh, against the treasury bill does not do justice, uh, justice to our economy. But again, you will understand why the market has adopted such a short-term view because of um, uh, the stability of um, the factors that I talked about, the exchange rate, the inflation, and other factors. Agreed. I, th I think there's been a lot of focus on equity when thinking of the, of the stock exchange and very little focus on, on debt. And if you look at it from a, from, from, from a global perspective, the debt market is usually much larger than the equity market. Exactly, yeah. But in Zambia, it's the inverse, where yeah. the equity market is larger than the listed debt market. Um, with that in mind, I've, I've often thought that perhaps, apart from the primary market issues of mm -hmm. what price you can issue your debt at, mm -hmm. because everything is pegged to government security, there's always the secondary market lack of liquidity in debt, mm -hmm. whereas historically you can go a whole year without having a secondary market trade in any listed debt. Yeah. And I think that's where the, the Securities Exchange Commission and other financial institutions like banks mm -hmm. should be able to come together and put some kind of legislation or some kind of framework mm -hmm. that allows for secondary market pricing because I think that's the, the, the part that's missing. There, there are secondary market trades, mm -hmm. especially in government bonds, yeah. that happens quite a lot. Corporate paper, obviously, no, because yeah. Yeah. And, and so on. But if you could price the corporate paper in the same way that government paper is priced in the secondary market, yeah. in that uh, there's bond calculators and there's an actual way to benchmark, yeah. right? Then you could get that uptick in corporate paper trading. 
But yeah. you know, it's 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 a balancing act, and I think all the players in the capital markets, including to a certain extent the insurance entities who yeah. hold yeah. government paper, should come together and be willing to not only issue paper but sell and buy paper yeah. for corporates. Yeah, I, I think for us, um, Pasco, the 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 secondary market activity is very, very key in the sense that it signals um, your activities in the primary market. I always give an example of um, if I were to buy a car that, that, that I could later on resell on the market, I have to look at the secondary market. And I give an example of uh, a Toyota Corolla, mm -hmm. not endorsing any car, but um, if you want to sell your second-hand car, you never, <coughs> no one beats, uh, I think, a Toyota Corolla. A Mercedes-Benz, yeah, it's good, but then the market is limited. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying basically is for you to sell your second-hand car, does affect the primary activity. So you have more people buying Corollas so that they can sell them when they're tired using them. The same thing actually happens in the capital markets. Mm. So in um, trying to raise funds, only those firms whose securities can trade in the secondary market are likely to raise funds in the primary market. So if you're trying to do a good test, just go to the secondary market and see how well a particular paper is um, selling. Mm -hmm. And that signals how well it do in, uh, in the primary market. So um, that said, we've started compiling statistics, especially with our issuance of a directive uh, late last year, I think mid last year in July. And uh, I'm glad to say that um, quite a number of banks that are heavy or uh, the largest um, uh, traders in terms of secondary uh, market bonds, government paper, are actually giving us statistics on a monthly basis. And um, in the not too distant future, we should be able to publish the prices and uh, that should be able to improve liquidity because uh, then people will be able to know the price of uh, particular securities. That should aid in uh, decision making, including for pension funds. Because if you're a pension fund manager and you're trying to buy in the secondary market, what price do you think would be a fair price if there's no um, uh, official um, uh, pricing kind of board where you can actually benchmark your prices. So we're working uh, towards that. But I also wanted to uh, further extend our thoughts whilst we're discussing about um, uh, discussing capital markets. We, we've talked about securities, which are usually referred to as shares, but mm -hmm. securities is general. general. And the definition of securities in the Securities Act includes uh, things like, um, uh, like we've said, bonds, uh, issued by both the, um, the government, which is the central government. It could be issued by a municipality or pretty much by corporate entities. But it, within the capital markets, we also have uh, a retail uh, sector side of it, which is um, um, a collective investment schemes. And, and, and this should excite uh, uh, most of the people, most or maybe some of our audience, uh, the, the ladies, the women, instead of putting money in... Um, risk uh, things that we keep seeing on WhatsApp and other uh, social media, collective investment schemes are regulated pools of funds. Since they are regulated, it becomes easier to actually get your money out instead of uh, lending it to um, an entity that uh, you barely know. So we normally actually get to encourage people that before you put aside any money, whether a lady, a gentleman, and in between, you actually need to ask people for their license. Banks such as yours are certainly um, um, registered, so they're dealing in uh, legitimate products, and the people's money will be secure through um, uh, banks uh, uh, such, as, such as yours. So those are the three main aspects of uh, capital markets in Zambia. Um, the shares traded on the Lusaka Stock Exchange, including the government bonds, but then there's also another aspect of uh, collective investment schemes. Noted. And, um, and, and that's, that's actually very correct. Uh, people should start seeing the stock exchange as, 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 as an avenue yeah. to safeguard money and to, and, 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 and to get a return. Mm -hmm. But that said, what is the way forward? I mean, uh, we, we, we've got a stock exchange that's, uh, like you're saying, has been in existence since uh, 1993 when it was established. Probably the first trades were in 1994. Yes. Um, so through that time, what we've seen is very very vanilla mm -hmm. instruments we've yes. got bonds uh, or corporate bonds issued by corporates we've got yeah. government bonds mm -hmm. and we've got what's very popular obviously equity yeah uh, companies equity 
what we haven't seen, we haven't seen, for instance, uh, uh, real estate investment trusts, mm -hmm. uh, REITs. We haven't seen uh, exchange traded funds, mm -hmm. ETFs. And I'm, I'm not necessarily looking at having a full derivative market. And yes. I know that the word derivative can be a can be a nasty word, especially yeah. if you're speaking to a regulator. Mm -hmm. But what about those kind of hybrid instruments? Uh, are we putting in place legislation and a framework to help the uh, yeah, stock exchange? Yeah, I, I'm actually, um, you more or less like uh, preempting my, my thoughts and the thoughts of the commission. Um, the real estate investment trust um, is awaiting um, uh, being put in, um, in a form that is acceptable to the market, but we've worked on that and we've made a lot of progress. So before the end of um, uh, the next quarter, which is starting, I think, tomorrow, we should be able to have um, the REITs um, guidelines in place. And then we're also seeing a lot of risk in commercial paper because certain uh, people are losing actual funds by putting money in commercial paper with all sorts of uh, entities. So. We are again issuing guidelines to see that uh, commercial paper um, is regulated. Um, that further reduces the risk or the exposure of uh, the investing um, public. I think the commission working with the UNDP has issued a green bond guideline. And speaking to um, our environment, our climate, so it becomes easier for, it, for somebody to issue actually green bonds. And uh, green bond is becoming very, very big in the sense that some pension funds, especially abroad, are willing to put into green projects. And now green does not necessarily mean just um, the usual um, ones that people think about agriculture and the like. It could be energy. So you could do solar. Solar is considered green because it doesn't pollute the environment. So these are some of the products I think our, our viewers should be able to, to think through and see that uh, they go to the market to raise um, a green bond to help with an energy situation but also the drought situation that we've um, suffered so if you were putting up dams and if you can uh, cleverly package it dams to store water to be used in a drought situation that's that could actually be um, um, uh, allow you to raise money uh, through the use of um, uh, green bonds so we have um, um, a number of exciting products but my challenge is to yourselves um, because we are just um, regulators products are supposed to be innovated by the market and for the regulator to see um, um, how safe these products are onto the investing public so let i'll throw back the <laughs> challenge, challenge. To, to, to the market yeah that is true and and uh obviously we 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 are trying to be innovative and and and, and create products in the capital markets, mm -hmm. uh both primary and secondary mm -hmm. in order to move the uh, capital market forward but in my mind, and this mm -hmm. is leading to my next question, in my mind, uh, the evolution of a capital market mm -hmm. goes through three stages. Mm -hmm. There could be more, but these are the three stages that I've, I've identified. Um, first one is uh, legislative. Yes. Whereas um, the, the government or a regulatory body mm -hmm. comes, uh, makes a statement in a country and says, if you're a corporate of this nature, mm -hmm. you, either for your license obligations, for you to be able to continue doing business, or for you to do certain things, mm -hmm. you have to be a listed entity. Okay. And so the capital market naturally uh, gets uplifted mm -hmm. because all these entities have to list. They may not want to, but mm -hmm. they end up listing. And that's how a stock exchange would start. The second phase would be uh, incentivizing, yeah. incentives. Whereas the treasury or the government comes up and says, you have tax breaks. Yeah. If you're listed and you look in a certain way, your tax would be 10% you know, less than, than, than uh, your, your tax band and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. So it gives a motivation for these entities to list. And the last part is when a capital market is mature enough that entities list for either prestige or to raise capital. Yeah. Now, my question is, where do you think the capital market in Zambia is? And if and and wherever it is, what legislative changes do you think or incentives do you think need to happen to give the capital markets a further boost? I, I think that's a very very good analysis, and uh, your question is um, something um, we're trying to answer together with the market. 
So um, government, through the Minister of Finance, has set up um, a steering committee looking at um, a 10-year strategy to develop capital markets. So we are trying to come up with um, a capital markets master plan to ensure that we answer questions such as the ones that you're asking. And um, speaking of the, the draft um, um, uh, document that I've had uh, occasion to read through, we're trying to answer questions around uh, what's the relevance of capital markets. So you have to go back to your uh, national development plan and see whether capital markets could actually help raise funds to target specific economic uh, sectors. I think that's where we're starting from. So we shouldn't just have capital markets for sure, but capital markets should be relevant to the economic uh, situation. So this uh, committee, which is um, headed by the Secretary to uh, the Treasury, is um, looking at those questions and um, stakeholders um, actually encouraged to um, uh, give um, insight into where they, they think capital markets should be, should be going. But in terms of talking about um, the stages that you, uh, you did mention, of course we've got a law already in place, but then there's a question, a very, very big question that we need to be answering as a, as a country. Should capital markets be uh, a business decision when you're speaking about um, um, registering and listing? Or should it be a legal position, like you said? Should actually uh, the government, for instance, say all oh, banks need to be listed because they handle public funds and the public have an interest to ensure that banks are run in a particular way? Should we have specific economic sectors compared to list. I think that's a policy kind of decision. Mm. And unfortunately, I'm not here. I cannot speak on behalf of government in terms of policy. I think that's a policy decision, whether to um, uh, copy what some countries have done, where uh, sectors of what we call sectors of public significance are actually compared to list for the purposes of transparency and also to ensure that um, um, such economic sectors have an input from um, um, the local um, um, uh, people as, as, as it were. But that's up to policy kind of decision. What we're looking at is the strategies of uh, using the existing policy positions and using the law to ensure that uh, capital markets um, are developed. But then um, um, we may actually step back again and speak about listing, which we call public markets, versus unlisted which is probably your private um, uh, kind of uh, market where private equity comes into space. So when we're really speaking capital markets from a regulatory position, we're talking both uh, public markets like the LUCE and uh, private markets like your private equity, which most of the banks actually do participate in. So the development of um, capital markets is a combination of the two um, uh, factors. So when we speak capital markets, we really need to be careful of what we talk about. I'll give you some insights from uh, a survey that was done by the same consultants that are helping us do the capital markets uh, master plan. Um, in a four-year review, there was actually $280 million raised in Zambia or for Zambian entities through private uh, equity, which is a private market, right? In the same period, only $10 million was raised through uh, the issuance of securities in a public market. So you can actually see that if we are looking at the size of activity, $290 million in a four-year review period, and uh, probably 90% of that is actually private equity. So from the securities uh, point of view, we are encouraging both, not just a uh, public listed um, securities, but raising of capital through any means authorized through the Securities Act. So we really need to be careful how we define capital markets. That is true. And um, ultimately, uh, there is need for capital yes. everywhere. And uh, capital will always follow the easiest route, right? Mm -hmm. Or will try to follow the easiest route. So with that in mind, with, the, with such a large gap of uh, capital raising in the private space mm -hmm. and the public space of almost 280 million difference in a four-year yeah. period, mm -hmm. what would be driving because driving that difference, because obviously there is a need for capital. Is yeah. it, is it, the, is it a, the, the, whether perceived or not, is it the extra costs 
or mm -hmm. perception of extra costs if you go to a private to a public listing mm -hmm. or is it uh, speed of execution mm -hmm. between private and public is it uh, documentation maybe yeah. there's a view that uh, you have more documentation in the in in, 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 in in the public space and lastly is it the the, the, the thinking that the capital that's coming in mm -hmm. or being raised in Zambia doesn't have a preference and that brings in the pension funds and the PIA and mm -hmm. what role they're playing in, in your discussions. Yeah, yeah. Are those agencies making it viable for, 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 for public fund managers to have a preference between public and private? I think what we get to see is, an, and again, it's an innovation that the market needs to needs to uh, bring to, um, to an economy such as Zambia. I think we are um, more than certain that over 90% of the business entities are SMEs and they are structured in, in a way that is not um, uh, suited for public kind of markets. Uh -huh. Because you normally find your kind of family businesses where maybe it's just husband and wife, usually what you see is 70% uh, shares owned by husband and 30% by wife. And then um, these guys get to make decisions on what we call a breakfast table. So they're not really willing to go into the public arena where their business uh, methods, uh, their business plans, their cash flows, um, um, subject of a public uh, kind of a scrutiny. So with 90% of the entities being SMEs, we do not um, uh, see, unless there's a drastic change, that these 90% of firms are likely to, to list. But then these 90% firms need funding. And that's where your uh, sector as the players on the market come in. How do we go to the public markets to raise funds and maybe then own lend them or own invest into these SMEs that needs funding. We did a survey, I think, four years ago, speaking to the four largest banks, I think, including yourselves, where we found that you have on your books quite a number of SMEs that need funding. But they have exhausted their funding parameters in the sense that uh, they need fresh shareholder funds in order to access, for instance, working capital from a bank. But then how do they access, how, or how do they improve this shareholder um, uh, fund part of um, their, their, their balance sheet. I think that's where banks and other players come in to see how we can structure the market. Maybe we can have four or five big funds that regularly raise money from the market and then because they understand the parameters or the working culture of the SMEs, they go on and on land. So in Zambia, we may not have a thousand listings. We may have five listings, ten listings, but these listings get to channel funds to the economic sectors um, um, that we're talking about. There are a lot of uh, women-led businesses that require funding, but they may not qualify to come to a capital markets in their present state to raise funds, but they can come to a bank. They can go to another financial intermediary and raise these funds. That's what we should be talking about. Okay. How can we have a transparent firm that can raise funds, poor funds, and then on lend? I think that's what we looking at. You actually get to see, like you said, uh, quite a number of pension schemes and collective investment schemes um, in that space that are investing in private equity. Because that's just the nature, I believe, of our economy. Our economy is full of SMEs. We do not have large firms that are likely to list. Your Zafikos are only limited. They are only a limited number. So we have that uh, thing and that's the setup of our economy. So we have to make do with the setup of our economy in terms of raising funds and channeling, ch channeling them to the funds to the pro uh, pro productive sectors of our economy. Right. Um, as we sort of uh, go to our conclusion, uh, in the world we're living in, I mean, we cannot have a conversation without uh, mentioning the global pandemic, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What themes have you seen since the pandemic broke in Zambia? Have you seen any themes that are attached to the capital markets? Yes, um, I think there were conversations and there have been activity about the government raising a COVID bond. I'm sure that goes straight into uh, funding um, sectors that um, may be affected by um, COVID. But then 
what we need to see, just like talking about um, green bonds, I think this presents an opportunity to the private sector to actually come up with um, products that speak to specific sectors of our economy that have been affected by COVID. Now, um, in terms of the way the law is uh, couched, it's um, in a general kind of format because it did not anticipate that there would be COVID and then it speaks to a specific COVID kind of situation. But our law, especially if you're talking about bonds or raising debt kind of instruments, you could actually pretty much call it anything as long as it confirms and conforms to the, um, the specifics within the securities market. And we've, we've seen this in um, other countries where uh, specific funds are being raised on the debt market, especially in order to actually get to um, help the struggling firms in the private sector that we actually need for our jobs. Because um, job creation is um, um, the most efficient way of income distribution. Once people have jobs, then they can buy their own medical services, they can buy their own food, and uh, pretty much um, um, anything you can think of. So helping raise funds to achieve or to alleviate the suffering of our people from a COVID kind of situation becomes the capital markets and any financial sector uh, kind of activity. So I'll throw back the challenge to you, the, the market, to come up with the products and then come to the SEC. We can have conversations and see how best that could be, could be done. Because it also speaks into the social aspect. So you may actually excite some pension funds that may want to participate and see that um, the social aspect of um, uh, COVID is actually tackled through capital markets. So we have our doors open. Although we may have to meet you over Zoom until the <laughs> situation actually changes. Now, thank you very much, yeah. uh, Philip, for taking the time and uh, giving us those insights yeah. into uh, the capital markets in Zambia. Thank you. Um, that was uh, Philip K. Chitalu, uh, the CEO of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, I have to say we're lucky to have uh, such a distinguished member of the capital markets come through and give us uh, our in, uh, insights into capital markets. Uh, the capital markets in Zambia are not a mystery. They're open for business and they're open to help entities, whether large, small or medium scale, to raise capital. And the avenues will be there and financial players will create instruments. So with that in mind, thank you and stay safe. Mm -hmm.